Hi, I'm Danielle. I do too much. I like hair, talking, cosplay, music, art, and stuff. Which one's the real one? I can't tell. Which one's real? Reality is slipping through my fingers. Which one? Which one? Pick up your star puppy uh, plush today. <laughs> and make sure you're subscribed. Part 1. What ruined my hair in the first place? Well, if I had to really break it down, I would say it was... Anger, stress, comparison and jealousy, tight styles and overstyling, under trimming, inconsistency and too much experimentation. Part 2. <laughs> How I saved it, and not all the advice you've heard before. The first thing I did was de-stress my life. Weep. <laughs> Small cranium gang, represent. In 2018 and 19, um, I was under extreme stress. Stress on stress on stress. And I saw the most significant hair fall I have ever seen, which is different from my trichotillomania. Uh, if you have been on the channel for a bit, you know that I have a compulsive disorder where I pull out my hair when I'm stressed, even in my sleep, which I think is cheating. Um, that's not fair. I should at least be disordered only in business hours. <laughs> um, and it wasn't for you know, mistreatment of my hair. I was just stressed out of my mind and I wasn't doing anything about it. I was just kind of trying to ignore it. But you know what doesn't ignore stress? Your whole body. <laughs> the stress is going to express itself. Stress Express, my least favorite department store. It's going to manifest somehow. Emotions are just information and you have to unpack them and process them and release them in a conscious way, in a healthy way, or your body's going to internalize them and it's just going to keep hurting you. So there was a bunch of stuff I wasn't dealing with. There was a bunch of stuff I didn't know I had to deal with. It's true. It's a big factor. I started going to therapy and suddenly my skin cleared. Suddenly I was able to sleep again and through paying attention to what I was feeling and why I was feeling it and fixing what I could and releasing what I couldn't, my hair started to come back. <laughs> you came here for hair tips and it's like, go to therapy. <laughs> if for nothing else, a tune up. Through therapy, I also found uh, that positive affirmations are a really big deal. You have to pump yourself up. Uh, you know when you were a kid and you had to like pump yourself up like you could do it you could win the race you all you you all you have to do is stretch <laughs> and train and then you can do it yeah why did we ever stop doing that because i need pep talks from me more than ever now <laughs> I compliment myself, I I say nice things to me out loud, and through that, I found that I was a lot more calm when I was doing my hair, I was a lot more patient with myself, I learned how to extend grace to myself a lot more just through practice of being nice to me, and that really helped me with my hair, it's crazy. Another huge thing, I stopped comparing my hair to other people's hair. And I'm so happy I started doing this before the, the times of 2020. Because it was a really big source of frustration for me. I, even at that time, when my hair was so sparse, I hadn't even yet realized how much more sparse than it was than my own head's potential. And that comparison was even more damaging because my hair was in a state of distress and I didn't even know. I found it especially hard when I compared my hair to other curl patterns. That was especially damaging because not only was I trying to thief my own joy, which is the essence of comparison, I also was setting unrealistic goals, the subject of my envy was it wasn't even realistic you know like it was like a fish comparing wings with a seagull and i'll tell you when i was doing all of that and my hair had fallen so much it hurt me so bad 
It's already so disappointing when your hair doesn't turn out how you want it to be, or your hair isn't cooperating in the way that you want it to. But on top of that, you've been comparing yourself to something so unrealistic for you and your genetics. It's just, oh, it hurts so much more. (laughs) I also had like a mental shift. I stopped at that time thinking about myself as a person with thin hair, and I started shifting my perspective and thinking of myself as a person with damaged hair that could be repaired and restored. Like, this is not the end-all be-all for me. And this was a realization I started having around 2019, 2020 on the horizon, on deck. I started taking pictures and videos of my hair a lot more during this time, which is when this channel really started (laughs) taking off. Uh, So I reviewed a lot of footage of my own hair and I started finding the beauty in it because I was consuming images of myself and I saw where I could improve, but I also got to see angles and movement and the beauty that is my 4C hair, even at that stage where it was so hurt. I also began accepting short hair because my hair, especially at that time, was short and wanted and needed to be short in order to grow. I was trying to make it do something it didn't want to do, which was damaging it further. It was a cyclical, destructive cycle and I had to break out of it. And all of those previous points is how I did that. (laughs) Oh Lord, the length checks. I also stopped doing like numbered length checks. Occasionally I'll check out like, ooh, she's here now. (laughs) And then I'll put her right back into the braids and I'll put her right back into that bonnet and I'll put her right back into this wrap and this wrap. (laughs) I'm not afraid of having short hair or I'm not afraid of having hair that appears to be short. Occasionally, it'll bother me because I've worked so hard to get so much of this freaking hair on my head. And I've worked so hard to get it this long. It's about this long now. And even now, it looks way shorter, you know? And yes, I'm still working on that. It is frustrating And it can be very disheartening because you want to show off your length sometimes. You worked very hard for each one of these strands. But honestly, I think wearing hats and caps and wraps (laughs) uh, really helped me with accepting short hair. Because I was like, listen, if I can have non-existent hair, if I can just put all my hair under this and still walk around and feel pretty and cool, what's short hair? Look, I have hair at all, (laughs) and I'm very grateful for it, no matter how short it appears to be, you know? I used to be about some length checks. I used to have that series, Star Puppy vs. Shrinkage. All my life, I had to fight shrinkage, bad hair days, like, what? No hair days, like, huh? Which I'm low-key thinking about bringing back with, like, this new perspective I have. Uh, (laughs) But it was really painful and disheartening for me to do a length check. And my hair being, I think the last time I did a length check, it was around eight inches all around or such. And maybe three or four months later doing a length check and it's like 8.5 or something. But of course I wasn't taking into consideration all of the factors of those days. Like right now it's horrifically humid And that has had an effect on my hair, even within a bonnet stretched around my head with a head wrap on. My hair still shrinks. She wants the moisture. And so equating my hair to very defining terms such as numbers, inches, centimeters, I really don't think that that's helpful for me and my 4C hair. There's so many factors. It shrinks at the drop of a hat. If you pour, if someone pours water in the other room, my hair shrinks three inches. It's <laughs> so for me, it just wasn't, it wasn't helping my journey. I knew that my hair was growing, but depending on the day, it might not show that. It, I might not be able to stretch it to the amount it needed to be stretched to show me that it was. And that, like, who's winning? Not me. So why am I playing? 
And after I stopped paying such intense attention to my hair in, in the form of length checks, I just kind of created this very low maintenance, you know, very consistent and easy hair routine, you know? And I continued adding things, experimenting with them off and on again, giving my hair a break in between. Um, <laughs> and I looked up in like 2020, when I had just moved, and suddenly I had a bunch of hair. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and actually, hopping back to 2019, I believe that's when I started doing, like, my experimentations. But instead of my experimentations where I would try, like, really tight styles like Bantu knots or the curl formers and the wave formers and stuff like that. I started doing month long challenges, focusing on my scalp and leaving the shaft of my hair alone and focusing on my scalp health and doing my little cute, consistent, like misting, deep conditioning and experimenting with like highly powerful, like strengthening and softening and, and just good stuff for the hair instead of experimenting with styles because I have 4C hair, you know? She's sensitive and she's me. I started doing things that were experimentation and kept me active and interested in my hair, but was very much so experimenting with how to boost the health of my hair. And it was really fun. This is where we get things like the inversion method, uh, and like misting every night challenges. I think that was in 2019 before I moved for the first time. And then, then I discovered the glory that were passion twists. We all know it was coming, but protective styling really is that girl. But for me, I had tried protective styles before. I had tried wigs as for the first um, inversion challenge, and that wig looked real good. I'm not going to lie. But wigs are just not for me as a protective style. I'm not very good at them, and they're not very good at me. They're super affordable, super easy to install and uninstall. It takes me like, what, an hour and a half to install a full head of passion twists? And what, 20 minutes to take them down? Yes! It still gives me beautiful access to my scalp so I can continue to nourish and moisturize it. I can mist the actual passion twist and it gets to the shaft of my hair. I also, they also are super light and don't make my head feel like I've dunked it in mercury. <laughs> and now my soul is retrograde. <laughs> and they look really cute on me. I saw so much growth just using these challenges and then returning to my very consistent and easy routines in between. So I didn't like burn myself out trying to do this like all the time, like do it for a month, take a couple weeks off, start doing it again. <laughs> I saw so much growth. My hair had already started coming back in from de-stressing and now I'm like fertilizing my scalp essentially. I started perfecting this scalp oil um, and I'm still tweaking it to this day. I'm trying out new oils within reason, like every couple of months, like doing an intensive of them, switching back and forth between the one that I know works for me and then tweaking it. And then of course, deep conditioning, 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 and deep conditioning, adding oils to the deep conditioner, trying out Ayurveda. It's, it's just been this beautiful process of all these positive experiments instead of hazardous experiments. And then of course, the thing none of us want to hear, which is like the most tried and true thing, you gotta trim your hair. You gotta trim your hair. You gotta trim your hair. I've trimmed my hair like easily three times this year. I trimmed my own hair and now it has this beautiful shape. I did a good job. I'm gonna have to give it up for my friend Denise from Live Naturally Love. I will link her how to trim your hair uh, by yourself, but I always refer to that. Let me get my pick. Ah, it's giving, I'll link that below as well, she rocks. And every time I trim my hair, I also take like stock of my life and if there's uh, anybody I need to trim out too. <laughs>
So yeah, if you want to hear more about any of those topics, let me know because I can talk. I can talk down as I'm sure you've noticed. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to see these videos early and see behind the scenes, secret projects that are coming out and have exclusive videos, I have like what? seven hours of exclusive videos at this point, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Please check out the Star Puppy plushes. There is a link in the description and also a button under this video if you'd like to check these out. And uh, I'll see you. This has been me, Danielle, your resident weirdo, Star Puppy, signing out. Say it with me now, Star Puppy. Away! Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.